like Stone said before, they would re-examine American heroes without malice. Well, that's only true unless you're talking about Reagan. Very staunch conservative, very almost an enemy for liberals. And in the episode 7, kind of previewing the upcoming episode, Oliver Stone talks about the barbaric policy work that Reagan had implemented. So it's kind of really upsetting, kind of a, you scratch your head like, what do you mean you weren't going to use malice against anyone when restating the facts? You're calling Reagan a, a barbarian. What? So I'll admit that. And then after a while, I kind of learned about Reagan being a little bit stubborn and his mismanagement of some foreign policy work. And that's what Oliver Stone really exposed, was his mismanagement, stubbornness, and very Americana way of approaching the Cold War and other foreign affairs. They showed Reagan pride of the military that he built up, that he further extended and expanded upon. In a way of comparing Obama to President Carter, the Republican successor of both presidents, Trump and Reagan, blamed their Democratic predecessor for decreasing the military and defunding it for weakness, showing weakness. He didn't compromise in many cases. Even when Gorbachev was willing to sit down, they sat down even, for a meeting to denuclearize both the Soviet Union and the USA nuclear stockpile. Reagan was just too boastful, too proud of what he had built up. Not only him, but the American way, that vital center that still lingered. And it's just a shame that he didn't reach peace with Gorbachev, who was so willing to do so, like Khrushchev did with Kennedy. But it just didn't happen. After the Reagan years, the documentary goes into current events, really, you could say, from the 1990s into the Obama era. He exposes Bush for not being as involved with preventing terrorist attacks and being very absolute with the citing of terrorism or with him. America, saying from his State of the Union, very absolute, kind of like Star Wars. The rest of the documentary then goes into the Obama era and more about the terrorism war. And I like how Oliver Stone isn't afraid to take a punch at Obama, how he puts him up on a pedestal, how everyone did, where Obama was going to be change and hope through all of this campaign promises he made. And then Oliver Stone kicks him down and says, oh yeah, the reason why we had the bailout was because Obama was essentially in the pockets of Wall Street and the bankers that needed the bailout because they mismanaged their own funds. And Congress passed a $700 billion bailout because of panic pressure. So it was a little funny how him as a liberal went after a liberal. In all seriousness, he goes into more of why Obama was the same kind of president you would expect to be a part of the norm and not break from the mold, not be truly progressive like Stone and Kuznick expect, expected him to be. So the prologue goes through two episodes. It talks about the beginnings of American imperialism and then into World War I. Now, I would talk more about it. Trust me, I would, but I would digress too much, and this video is going probably longer than it should have. But he, the reason why I really hate the documentary is when, in the 1990s, all of a sudden Oliver Stone goes back to World War II and talks about how American companies and banks were working with Nazi Germany, which was very surprising and not surprising was that Hitler had a portrait of Henry Ford in his office because two reasons. One, Hitler admired the work innovation that Henry Ford provided for America, the assembly line, the industrialization that he pioneered. And Henry Ford also hated Jews, so that didn't help. 
But Oliver Stone not only goes through that section about the World War II era of America involvement with Nazi Germany, he copied the same exact 15 minutes and put it in the prologue, one of the prologue episodes. And that's just bad editing. That's just bad documentation of history. Doing it all over again. Why would you do that? Why couldn't you have talked about domestic issues? Like, like women's suffrage. That is a pretty good issue to talk about. It didn't talk about American imperialism. So why would they talk about that? I don't get it.